Good evening, Lone Star Gunners. Welcome to the podcast. This is Lone Star Gun Talk, the official podcast of Lone Star Gun Rights, and I am your humble host as always, Derek Wills. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, I have to let you guys know that uh, if you subscribe to the audio-only version on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever, I have to apologize for failing to upload the episode from two weeks ago until I uploaded this episode so i'm sorry about that that was an oversight on my part i it completely i completely spaced and although i try to be perfect i must confess that i am not uh today we got a very special guest we have um we we have just jeff Kaysen from uh who is running to fill in for uh, our very good friend Jonathan Stickland for House District 92. Mr. Kaysen, welcome to Lone Star Gun Talk, sir. Hi, Derek. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm pleased to be here. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm ecstatic to have you in here. Um, for anybody else that is, that is tuning in, you guys know the drill. Go ahead and chime on in comments where you're watching from. Uh, and if you happen to have any questions along the way, feel free to ask them, and I'll relay them if there's some time permitting. Uh, but... Uh, you know, Jonathan Stickland has been a very good ally for all of us in the Texas legislature, and uh, he has decided that he's not going to seek re-election. And so, the, the 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 contest for House District 92 is actually quite crowded. Jeff Kaysen is somebody that is one of three candidates that we've chosen to endorse. Which, uh, if y'all know, we don't hand out lightly. Uh, but I wanted to introduce him to y'all. Early voting is going on right now. And if you live in the Bedford area uh, and you're considering on who to vote for, I wanted to bring him in and introduce him to y'all. So, Mr. Kaysen, uh, if you could, please give us, uh, give us a quick rundown who you are, what's your background, uh, and uh, tell, us, tell us about who you are. Well, um, Derek, first of all, call me Jeff. And um, I've, uh, I've lived in Texas since 1984. My um, private sector job brought me to Texas uh, in, my, in my career path. And um, I'm married to my beautiful wife, Wendy. We have five terrific kids, eight wonderful grandchildren. And um, I'm, I'm preparing to exit the private sector May 1st uh, and retire again, finally. Um, my path into politics started back in 2004, actually, when Bedford went through a tax rollback and I got interested in what was going on. And ultimately in 2006, I ran for city council and uh, won, served three years on city council where we fought for lower, lower spending and uh, smaller government. And um, after that, I uh, left the council. I, did, I decided not to run again. We accomplished a, a great many things, um, holding the tax, the city tax rate at the same level for three years running. And um, shortly thereafter, uh, some folks came to me and um, convinced me to uh, run for this very position 10 years ago. And I challenged our then 14-year incumbent uh, in the primary. We came away with 42% of the vote. Uh, challenged him for a specific reason. He was the chair of the elections committee. The voter ID bill was bottled up and couldn't get out to the House floor for a vote. So that's what prompted me to get involved back then. Uh, after that, Jonathan Stickland entered the picture and has served us well for eight years. And um, he has, as you mentioned recently, announced his retirement last summer. And so again, some folks came to me and uh, I told them no three times. I, I, I wasn't interested, but um, my wife and I committed this to prayer. We met with some folks and made that final decision that uh, we would indeed re-engage because the condition of our country right now is such that uh, we need all hands on deck. We need uh, everyone fighting to keep Texas red uh, to keep Tarrant County red and uh, to keep House District 92 uh, red. And I am looking forward to winning this election and going to Austin and continuing to represent uh, this district with strong, 
conservative values. Right on. So, you know, obviously we're a gun rights organization and gun rights is our bread and butter. But, you know, whenever it comes to everybody else's issues, they have a lot of other things that they care about outside of gun rights. And don't get me wrong, our followers are very passionate about uh, our right to bear arms. But we'll get back to that. But I want to ask you, outside of gun rights, what are some things that you would consider to be high priorities for you? Uh, whenever whenever you do enter the legislature? Well, Derek, one of the things that I have committed to the voters of this district, my team since the beginning of July last year, we've knocked on over 36,000 doors in this district. Uh, we've blanketed the district at least three times. And one of the things that I've committed to do is to be a voice for every single citizen of the district that, that chooses to engage and, and join in with us. I, I started this campaign by telling people there's no I in team. This is about us. I'll be the front man. I'll be the voice. But I want to know who you are and what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you're needing. I put my phone number out there to the district on everything we've published. People are calling and texting me every day, uh, sending me emails. And it's fantastic the responsiveness that I'm getting from our constituents here in the district. The overriding issues that we have uh, been discussing with our voters uh, center around the, the, the top issues on the radar are property tax, immigration issues, constitutional carry, and the life issue concerning uh, abortion and, and killing unborn babies. So those four issues are really the top issues uh, that people have been sounding out loud and clear about. So let's let's take a let's take a couple of those. Uh, let's start with property tax. That's everybody's favorite. Uh, if you were able to mold property tax in Texas to your perfect ideal, uh, what would that look like? Well, it wouldn't look like anything because there wouldn't be property tax uh, as long as you have to pay rent on your property and essentially that's what we're doing we're paying rent to live on our property uh you know texas has always been known for its its independence self-reliance ruggedness and uh uh you know uh, the freedom that we espouse well we really don't have freedom when it comes to property rights uh it, it, the first time you don't pay your tax on your property watch what happens uh people are euphoric as i was when when you pay your homes off well, guess what? Uh, I've talked to people out there not long ago. I spoke to somebody that uh, uh, told me, you know, we didn't we paid our house off not long ago and we still have to pay nine thousand dollars a year in property tax. That's rent, Derek. Yeah, that's <laughs> monthly rent. Uh, you know, it, it's it's interesting. I remember I forget who it was that was uh, arguing about this last year after after the session. Uh, and they essentially said that, well, the state shouldn't really mess with property tax because the state doesn't collect property tax. Those are all done at the county level. Uh, mm -hmm. And without the counties being able to collect those those property taxes, they won't get funded. Do you have any thoughts on, on that sort of, sort of sentiment? Well, well, yeah, actually, I do. Um, we're espousing and support, as is stated in the Republican Party platform, I think it's plank 160 or 161 or something like that, um, a consumption type tax. Uh, it's, it's no easy solution to willy nilly, you know, one day you're this and the next day you're that. But I think, I think the Texas Public Policy Foundation did a study back in 2015 uh, on the feasibility of, of a consumption type tax. That was five years ago. And uh, that can just keeps getting kicked down the road and nobody really wants to get serious uh, about our property rights and giving us the freedom to own our property free and clear from government intervention and uh, our interference and uh, ultimately confiscation if you don't pay your tax. Right. Um, you know, I probably one of the bigger things and it's great to 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 advocate for. Uh, changing the tax system in order to reduce the taxes. Uh, I think the average across the state of Texas is about two and a half percent for property tax. Uh, 
which is one of the highest rates across the United States. Uh, but the problem is, at least many people might think is a problem, whenever you want to replace that amount of revenue with a consumption tax, which is a sales tax, which right now we already pay six and a quarter up to eight and a quarter, you know, a lot of people start to get worried, well, how much is that going to cap out at? Now, I'm not asking specifics here because that's a very complex question to answer. Uh, but if somebody were to raise a concern like that for you, how would you, how would you address that sort of thing? Well, the sausage making process is never a pretty process. But again, I cited the Texas Public Policy Foundation, and, and I, I don't have that committed to memory here or anything. But when you, when you look at the population of our state, some 30 to 35 million people, on, I can't remember specifically the exact number. Uh, when, when you have a tax, uh, a consumption type tax, what that does is it gives you the freedom uh, to control your spending, to, to participate or not participate. And when, when you have that, that much of a tax base spread out over that many people, um, I, I believe that study has already indicated that, that this is something that can be viable and sustainable and support the things that uh, the current property tax system already uh, addresses. Uh, the difference being the property tax system is, is not a voluntary um, uh, process or, or you know, procedure. You're, right. you're forced right. to pay these taxes. And so uh, with with a consumption tax um, type of uh, system that that brings, uh, you know, an increased amount of uh, freedom and liberty uh, to our spending and, and, and how we control our finances right now, the property tax. And as I mentioned, the people, the, the thousands of people we've talked to, there's there's a lot of people out there that are expressing sincere concerns about their ability to be able to stay in their homes long term because property values just keep going up and the system just keeps taxing more and more and more. Well, yeah, as long as the appraisal district has the uh, final authority on the value of your house that you've lived in for 20 years and haven't sold it to anybody, they just arbitrarily set it and therefore they can effectively set their extortion rate for you for any that, home. That, that's right. That's right. One of the things we, we advocate is is freezing <clears throat> the appraisal values as a starting point. And as I said earlier, you can't willy nilly overnight go from one system to another. It would it would be a process. And I can't tell you how long that process would take. But but you've, you've got to start somewhere and we just can't seem to get started. Right. At, at that first block. Right. Right. Uh, now, you mentioned uh, spending in there briefly uh is spending something that you consider to be out of control in texas or is it something that uh, should be addressed minorly what would you say the state of spending in the state of texas is well you know overall we we really don't i don't think we have revenue problems as much as we have spending problems and it's always seemed to be that way you know, when I was on, on city council for a brief three years, um, wow, you know, we, we, we want to spend money on everything. We want to subsidize this group. We want to subsidize that group. Government can't pick or shouldn't be picking winners and losers. Uh, yet uh, the capital cronyism, uh, the, the things that, uh, you know, politicians like to do, um, they, they become very benevolent with taxpayer money. And um, quite frankly, uh, <clears throat> we, we've got to end this high on opium that uh, the taxpayers on both sides of the aisle seem to be on. And, and when I say opium, I mean OPM, other people's money. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it, that's, that's just a problem. And, and, and it feels good until you run out of opium. Right. Yeah, that's the problem with socialism, isn't it? Exactly. Um, so let's, let's change gears. So you, property tax, you pretty much, you're, you're dead set that property taxation is, is awful and needs to end and there needs to be coming, uh, it's, there needs it's to theft. Be, it's theft. <laughs> it is theft. It's, it's cut uh, to the chase. It's <laughs> theft. <laughs> well, if you want to get technical, it's extortion. Uh, but, uh, theft and extortion are exactly the same thing. It's just the means by which you, you carry it out. Exactly. Uh, 
but you're absolutely right. But uh, so your other issues that you talked about, um, you'll have to forgive me. I kind of am drawing a blank now. We kind of went off a little bit too far on uh, uh, on property tax, but uh, you also uh, life well, was another one. And um, we're 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 very strong on on the abortion issue. We're honored and and proud to be endorsed by Texas Right to Life, one of the premier life groups in Texas, and. Uh, Excuse me. We believe uh, life begins at conception and ends at natural death, period. So um, that that's one issue. We, we, we've we got to stop uh, the slaughter of unborn children. It's it's a travesty in our state and in our country. And uh, we, we we've just got to bring it to an end and I'll fight to do that. One of the other issues that I had mentioned, of course, was um, Immigration. We, we have a, a real serious illegal immigration problem with with uh, people coming illegally into our, our state and our country from all over the world. We have to turn off the magnets here in Texas. We have to turn off benefits. We have to turn off in-state tuition, the things that draw them in. Um, we have to make um, we have to make businesses more accountable in, in, in how they uh, hire people, perhaps, uh, to make sure that they're not drawing on this pool of, of cheap labor that's here illegally. Uh, just just a variety of things uh, like that. And of course, constitutional carry that that brings us back to uh, Lone Star gun rights. And, and again, if I didn't mention it, we are really honored and, and proud to have your endorsement and appreciate it very much. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to mince words. Jonathan Stickland's shoes are, uh, are big shoes to fill. Uh, but after I, I started speaking with you and getting to know you, uh, I had I had zero doubt that you are the person to fill those shoes. Uh, whenever it comes to guns, uh, from the state perspective, what would you like to see, aside from constitutional carry? Well, um, I, I think we, we have open carry. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would like to see, you know, the fees and, and, and the, the money part that is uh, associated with with our ability to carry guns. I'd like to see that go away. It's 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 a revenue uh, stream that uh, basically is just another form of taxation. Right. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see that go away. Uh, righty. Uh, so let's let's shift gears here just a bit more. Um, let's talk politics today, generally. You know, state politics, federal <coughs> politics. Uh, it, they're basically the the same thing, just a different type of monster. Uh, what would you say is or are? It can be plural here. Uh, are the biggest problems in politics today? Well, um, you know, we, we, we've got a lot of crony capitalism going on. We've got government, again, wanting to pick the winners and losers. Um, special interest, um, taxpayer-funded lobbying. Uh, there's, there's, there's just a whole spectrum of things that uh, make, make the political landscape a real, a real ugly place right now. Mm -hmm. Is there anything... From I guess a uh, a a federal perspective, or um, I guess yeah, that's probably the best way to phrase it. Is there anything from like a federal perspective that you think would be uh, is a bigger problem, or at least feeds that sort of issue? Because uh, I see a lot of divisiveness uh, among everybody, whether they be. Uh, hardcore conservative Republicans or you have the socialist left like there is this butting of heads that I see that like we can't even have a, a rational discussion anymore uh, even and I have noticed and it's, it's sad that I have to say this but uh, you know even amongst conservatives when they disagree on things I've seen the butting of heads that is like like uh, how do I how do I phrase this? It's ugly. It is. It is like you are my enemy, and I don't want anything to do with you. Do you, Do you see that on uh, you know yourself, whenever you're out and about and on social well, media and all that? I I do. I do. Um, you know, I've I've seen it in my own campaign. Um, you know, sources of funding that that are supporting me. 
um, you know, my stance on certain things. Uh, I, I am a very conservative individual. I'm proud of that. I make no apologies for that. I'm, I, you know, when, you, when you're standing in the middle of the road, the only thing you get there is run over. Uh, <laughs> I, the, the civil discourse uh, seems to has, uh, have disappeared, and uh, it's and it's really sad. Um, I I don't like to think that uh, I would go to Austin and, and be a bomb thrower or you know uh, someone that couldn't uh, try and and you know uh, establish a civil discourse with my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, or even the more moderate uh, colleagues that might be on my side of the aisle. I, I think that's something we all need to strive for. But at the end of the day, the people of this district is who I will be representing. And the wants and needs of these people, uh, I'll be the voice of them and, and uh, of those issues. So, uh, you know, uh, you 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 need to um, consider all angles of the issues and topics that you're addressing when you're you're trying to have this discourse. But at the end of the day, you may have to draw a line in the sand and say, here here it is. I won't cross this. Um, you know, people say, well, well, politics is is all about give and take. Well, perhaps to some degree, but when it violates your principles and your core values and the things that you believe in, the things that made this country great, um, you can't you can't give ground. Uh, you can't just keep the ball on the 50 yard line. You have to keep moving it in your direction. And when I look at the landscape today, never in a million years, Derek, did I would ever think that a, a full blown socialist would be running and, and, and this close. Uh, to receiving a major political party nomination for president of these United States. Never. And uh, it, it, it's quite frank, frightening, to tell you the truth. And with the onslaught of, of the left and the progressives wanting to take our guns and, um, you know, basically tell us how to live, we, that's, that's not how this country was founded. Our founding fathers tried to flee from from those things. You know, we don't have kings, we don't have monarchs or dictators in this country, and, and that's not what America is all about. Now, Jeff, you know, Bernie Sanders isn't a socialist. He's a democratic socialist. And if if I'm being honest, <laughs> socialism hasn't really been tried. Those are, those are <laughs> other things that nah. just, they're not the same. <laughs> well, you know, let's talk to our folks down in Venezuela. Let's let's see how that's working out down there. And and there really is no such thing as democratic socialism. And socialism is just one step away from communism. So um, yeah, it it these these are the failed uh, the failed ideals and 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 beliefs of the left. Uh, we need to get back to the um, uh, founding principles of this country. Uh, the ideals we need we need to re-embrace them, uh, re-embrace the things that made us great, and and we're moving so far away from that. The the revisionist uh, history that's being taught, the indoctrination in so many of our schools and universities that's going on, and if you'll notice, the people that surround Bernie out on the trail are all young people, and that that's that's quite quite disheartening. It it really is. They've, they've been fed a, a lot of lies and misinformation, but, but these young people are the future of our country, and, and we've, we've, got, we've got to get this turned around. They've also been fed a lot of Tide Pods, but that's none of my business. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. So, so you, you, you spoke about uh, our founding principles, the things that made us great uh, to begin with. So I, I want to put you, and, and again, we don't have to get into like super specifics here, just generally, uh, but I, uh, I, but you're appointed as emperor of the United States. You have the ultimate authority to change state law, federal law, whatever. What would your America look like? What would your Texas look like? How would, how would that be different compared to today? Well, again, I, I, I think I might have just touched on that. Um, I would um, I would wave the wand and, and, and take us back to to, again, our, our, our founding principles to where we would re-embrace what's made us great. 
you know, I look at uh, my parents' generation, the greatest generation, and the things that uh, uh, that generation fought and died for. Um, you know, we 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 somehow it feels like we've lost our way, and um, we we've allowed all of this, uh, you know, progressivism and liberalism to creep into the picture. Um, I would take us back to 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 another time where we were embracing our founding fathers and, and those principles. And, um, you know, if, if, if I had a wand and could do that, we're just, we're just on the wrong path. And, and, and that's one of the very reasons I've stepped up and reengaged and, uh, entered this race. I feel very strongly, uh, about fighting for our, our future, our children's future, uh, because it really is about our kids. You know, I was in the boy scouts, and we'd go on campouts, and every every campout, our our scoutmaster would say, "Leave your campsite better than you found it." We're not doing that now. Mm -hmm. We're definitely not doing that. Yeah, uh, I have to, I hate to say this, Jeff, but uh, clearly you are a right wing extremist, uh, t touting <laughs> liberty and limited government. And yeah. we just can't have that. I mean, yeah. think of the poor people. Think of the children, Jeff. The poor children, they, they, they can't afford the health care. They, they, how are they going to know who they are whenever they're in, you know, like five and six years old? Your, 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 your radical ideas mm -hmm. are just going to, they're just, they're, people are going to get left out to dry and we just can't have that. We need to protect everybody and just hold everybody up, right? Hang on, Derek. Let me get a tissue. This is, this is, <laughs> this is getting intense. Well, perhaps they would be better off maybe in Bernie's food lines. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, that's um, that's the alternative, um, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I, I had to just quick sidebar. I, I love seeing those memes of Bernie supporters uh, doing like bake sales and things like that that say <laughs> fight capitalism and it's like... <laughs> You do realize that's what you're engaging in right the now, right? The bank sale is capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> this is a free market at work. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so I'm going to, I, you know, I, first of all, Jeff, thanks again for, for coming on uh, and telling us a little bit about who you are. Um, where can people find out more about you? I mean, it, it, we've been talking for about a half hour, uh, so you can't really cover everything in that amount of time. But if somebody wanted to find out more about your platform and who you are, how, what, where could they go? Well, our webpage, Derek is www.jeffcason.com. And our Facebook is uh, Jeff Kaysen for Texas house. <clears throat> and uh, you can find us on, on there. Um, and we're also, I believe on Twitter, we don't do a lot of tweeting. We're very busy these days. Um, our, our team is, is a finite size, so we don't have unlimited folks running around uh, covering things. But uh, for sure on Facebook and, uh, again, our website, you can find out the issues that are most important to the people of this district. And um, if you have any questions, uh, anybody out there that's got any questions, you'll find my phone number uh, out there as well. And I will take your call. You can text me again, as I mentioned earlier in the, uh, the conversation. I have people texting and emailing and uh, calling all the time. And uh, the, the, the conversations, the dialogues, they've just been so uplifting. I, I, I'm truly humbled and honored to be doing this. And um, it's, it's just, it's been great. I can't tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you. The, um... Things have been just crazy on our end. I can only imagine what it's been like on your end uh, with with all of the campaigning and, and going and being at the polls daily. Uh, if you if y'all aren't aware, guys, our early voting is going on right now. Election day is March third. Um, if you live in Bedford, you need to support Jeff Kaysen. Uh We highly recommend him anyway. Your vote is your vote, but we highly recommend and, and proudly endorse him uh, to fill uh, Jonathan Stickland's shoes. Um, I'm going to give you the floor, man. Uh, is there anything that you want to say before before we let, wrap things up? Well, the District 92, uh, which which I'm running to uh, replace Jonathan in, is consists of Hearst, Euless, Bedford, a little bit of uh, North Arlington, and um, Grand Prairie, a sliver of Grand Prairie. 
Um, but no, uh, Derek, I just uh, I, I feel very passionately that um, our our freedoms are under attack. Uh, we see it on the national stage. We see it on the state stage. And um, we just all need to come together and uh, stand on our Constitution and our founding fathers and uh, do everything we can to uh, keep those freedoms alive because there are people out there. And, and I know it might be hard to um, uh, really get your head around it, but there truly are people out there that, that don't like America and they're they're here to try and change it and change it for the worse in my opinion so uh i'm i'm just gonna you know fight as hard as i can uh you know you mentioned i'll have big shoes to fill i'm not going to try and fill jonathan's shoes uh, i think that's impossible uh he did a terrific job uh he's got a different shtick i'll have a different shtick but i'm certainly going to go down there and fight every bit as hard to uh, advance our freedoms and, and principles and values forward in the Texas House. And uh, I just uh, hope that others in the district will, who are listening will, um, you know, uh, feel like they, they have uh, a lot in common with us and, and stand in the same place we are and support us. And again, um, my website's www.jeffcason.com and you can find us on Facebook. And I just uh, can't tell you, Derek, how honored we are to have you backing uh, our campaign and endorsing us. It's a great honor and I'm, I'm truly, you know, privileged when, when I heard you say I'm, I'm like only the third person to have been endorsed so far by your organization, that that's significant. And, um, it, it was no easy task, uh, but I appreciate it very much, and uh, just thank you for having me on. Well, it is my pleasure. Uh, you know, throughout the legislative cycle, um, I would just want you to know that you will always have an open invitation back on here anytime you want. You see, uh, one of the things that you brought up during our conversation was transparency, and that is something that you're very much aiming to, to achieve, uh, which is why you put your phone number out there for everybody, because you feel as if... And it's true that you are working for everybody in that district, not that you're some, you know, leader who is like, this is how we're going to do it. You're you're there as a representative, not as a and I hate the term political leader. Right. I, you know, I that's something that I very much appreciate. It's not. Well, some, well, yeah, go ahead. Go well, ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say one thing, Derek. I, I, I failed to mention or forgot uh, one of the things I've been characterizing this position as I've told people for the last 36 of my 48 year career in private sector, I've been in sales, a sales representative. And I really look at this job as the same thing. The constituents of this district are my customers and I have to know what my customers want and need. And the only way I can find that out is if I can communicate with them mm -hmm. so that I can go to the factory in Austin where the sausage is made and try and get the factory to produce what they want and need. And uh, I've, I've told everybody this, that, that I have two big words that are very important to me, transparency and accountability. I will be transparent and communicate everything I can and possibly communicate. And the accountability part is a two-way street. And I need you the constituents, my neighbors, friends, family of HD 92 to hold me accountable. Uh, the people of this district need a voice. They want a voice. And I'm giving them the opportunity to have that voice by calling me. There won't be a filter. There won't be a wall or a switchboard. That number is my personal cell number. And I've had it for eons and I'll continue to keep it. Uh, you'll get a crank call once in a while, but, you know, <laughs> by and large, the people of this district are fantastic and, um, I, you know, everybody has, has been very respectful and civil and, um, you know, that's the only way to do this job. You've got to communicate. It's one of communicating and um, I'm, I'm putting myself out there and making myself available. Absolutely. That's uh, that really is amazing. And I, I'll tell you, I am looking very much, I'm very much looking forward uh, to working with you in Austin um, you know, I know that you got a crowded race to, to win, uh, but I have the utmost faith in the voters, uh, and 
you know, I, I, I can't wait to, to work with you in restoring gun rights in, in Texas, making Texas pro-gun again, which is something that we desperately need. Uh, you know, I, I've said it a thousand times on this, on this program. Cato Institute has Texas ranked 29th for gun rights. And we're Texas. That's, that's hard. To, that's hard to understand. <laughs> I can't get my head around that. It, it's hard. It's, it's difficult. It, we're it, supposed it to be. Really is. We're Texas. What's we going should on? be number one. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. But well, I look uh, forward to working with you guys too. Absolutely. Well, uh, again, Jeff, uh, anytime you want to come back on, all you got to do is let me know. I appreciate your time. And uh, guys, early voting is going on right now. If you if you live in HD ninety two, please go and support uh, Jeff Kaysen. Jeff, thank you so much again. I appreciate your time, sir. Thanks, Derek. Have a good uh, evening. You too. Well, guys, that is going to wrap it up for me. Uh, keep in mind that uh, we are also endorsing Rhonda Seth in HD twenty five. That's Dennis Bonin's old sweet old seat, and. We are also endorsing Briscoe Kane uh, in HD 20, uh, 128 out in Deer Park. Uh, so make sure that you guys go out and support these folks. Those are the only three people we've endorsed for this primary season. And, uh, yeah, we got we, we to gotta get this session going. And also, Dan Patrick's pushing uh, Universal Background Checks. So check out our postcard campaign. And until next Sunday, Lone Star Gunners, arm yourself with knowledge and share the ammo.